What is the difference between squids and octopuses? Squids and octopuses are some of the most fascinating creatures in the world. Having been around for millions of years, these invertebrates have more than proved their mettle in the often brutal game of oceanic survival, outlasting countless competitors and predators along the way. Today, they continue to thrive in the form of multiple species and are now playing various roles in human culture, from being the main course to being subjects of revolutionary scientific study. The similarities between them are more than apparent, but their differences are not so well known to many casual animal lovers. That's where today's video comes in, as we take a look at these two animal groups and see why they are classified differently. So grab your scuba gear as we dive into the world of the squid and the octopus. Octopus Octopuses, or octopi if you're feeling fancy, are a group of eight-limbed mollusks from the octopoda order. They are also classified under the cephalopoda class of mollusks because of their bilateral body symmetry, prominent heads, and tentacles. Interestingly, old sailors and fisher folk sometimes called octopuses and other cephalopods inkfish because of their ink squirting. Within the octopoda order, there are two main suborders. The first is Octopoidae, which features most of the known families, subfamilies, genera, and species of octopus alive today, which are generally finless with no shells. The other suborder, Sirena, is home to octopuses with small internal shells and fins on their heads. All in all, there are more than 300 known species of octopus, and potentially dozens more awaiting discovery. Octopuses are soft-bodied creatures, which allows for incredible feats of flexibility. Most are so squishy and soft, they could fit through crevices the size of a silver dollar. The hardest part of an octopus is its two-part beak, which is made of chitin. The hooked beak resembles that of a parrot and is crucial to an octopus hunting and feeding strategy. Because of the beak's location under its body, octopuses look like they're sitting on their victims when killing or eating. When striking, an octopus beak delivers a dose of venom to paralyze the victim. Once prey has been neutralized, the octopus uses its beak to rip chunks off and eat. So what do octopuses eat? Well, it varies depending on the species of octopus, its size, habitat, and what's available. For instance, bottom-dwelling octopuses tend to prey on clams, other mollusks, crustaceans, and sea worms. Open water octopuses, on the other hand, eat fish, prawns, smaller octopuses, squids, and pretty much anything they can overpower. When it comes to habitat, the answer is similar to the question of diet. It varies. They live at various depths, from intertidal zones to the abyssal depths. They can be found in shallows near the beach, in coral reefs, in open water, and on the seafloor. Most species prefer to have some ground or coral beneath them so they don't have to worry about predators sneaking up on them from below, or even their 360-degree vision might not help. As far as mobility, octopuses mainly crawl along whatever surface they are on using their limbs. When they need to actually swim or move quickly, they use jet propulsion. However, instead of rocket fuel and combustion, octopuses suck up water into their mantles and squeeze it out of a siphon creating concentrated squirts of water that propel them in the opposite direction. Octopuses from the Serena suborder do not use jet propulsion because they get around using fins. Next, we need to talk about their limbs. An octopus's limbs are essential for everything it does. These limbs, or arms, serve as hands and legs, working to grip objects and prey or provide locomotion. The limbs are lined with suckers of varying diameter, which allows the animal to grip and hold on to things. Octopus limbs are truly fascinating wonders of nature. Not only can they grow back if severed, but they are also sensitive to light, allowing the octopus to see even when its eyes are obstructed or blinded. Their eyesight is also pretty impressive, with their eyes being eerily similar to ours in structure. However, they cannot see color at all. The fact that octopuses are colorblind is crazy when you realize that they can change color to match their surroundings or to make threat displays. In fact, they can change color and texture to blend in properly. How they know what color to change to is beyond even the brightest minds in science, but the answer surely lies in their incredible skin. 
In addition to detecting light, changing color, and changing texture, an octopus's skin can taste. Their sensitive skin has a sense of taste between 10 and 1,000 times more powerful than our own. Their sense of smell isn't bad either. They smell using small olfactory slits beneath their eyes. All these super senses, mobility, and tricks make octopuses some of the most successful animals in nature. They are also highly intelligent creatures with sharp, short, and long-term memory skills and problem-solving skills beyond most other invertebrates. Scientific studies continue to find more and more amazing capabilities, and it is very possible that things like observational learning and even empathy are within their grasp. In the wild, octopuses tend to be somewhere in the middle of the food chain. This means that while they hunt and prey on a wide range of animals, they also need to watch their own backs. Large fish, dolphins, sharks, seabirds, and even larger octopuses and cephalopods are their most common natural predators. Of course, octopuses have to worry about humans too. Octopus is a famed delicacy in many of the world's coastal regions, and we have hunted them since time immemorial. Squid Like octopuses, squids are cephalopods. Clever, soft-bodied mollusks rocking long tentacles and a killer beak that can deploy neutralizing toxins. However, there are some significant differences between the two animals, starting with classification. Squids may be in the cephalopoda class along with octopuses, but their group is a whole different order. Decapodiforms. Deca, as you know, means 10, while well, pod can refer to legs or limbs. That's right, a squid has 10 limbs compared to the octopus 8. Squids have eight regular limbs that are pretty similar to their octopod cousins, but they also have a pair of extra-long tentacles that use to grip and manipulate prey. All ten limbs are lined with suckers, while some species also have a series of little hooks on their arms and tentacles. There are over 300 species of decapodiforms, many of which are rightly or wrongly called squids. True squids, however, are classified under the Tethoidae order of mollusks. Like octopuses, squids emerged on the scene during the Jurassic period, sometime between 200 and 145 million years ago. Unlike octopuses, squids are largely found in open water. They do not live under the cover of coral or in caves and tend to just float about wherever they roam. This inability to dwell on surfaces stems from the fact that squids are not quite as soft-bodied as boneless octopuses. Squids actually have a small internal chitin skeleton called a gladius, and this is why they appear more rigid and elongated compared to the round-headed octopuses. While a squid's arms and tentacles are highly flexible, an octopus's entire profile is a different level of eh, loosey-goosey. Squids can be found in shallow coastal waters or the great dark abysses thousands of feet below the surface. Like octopuses, squids are predators with a wide range of tastes. They eat fish, jellyfish, and other cephalopods, including other squid. Legendary tales of squid-like sea monsters would have you believe that the huge ones eat people, but that is undocumented. When hunting, squids rely on their powerful eyesight to pinpoint prey. Deep sea species like the colossal squid have special light organs called photophores on their eyeballs. These photophores emit light, acting like headlights on a car so the squid can find food. In some lucky cases, the light can even attract potential prey to the squid. The light may also disorientate other victims, making the hunt even easier. When the prey has been caught, squids use overwhelming force to hold prey in position so they can eat. In some species, the beak can inject paralyzing saliva into victims to keep them from fleeing or squirming. The beak quickly gets to work, ripping meat into swallowable chunks. The hooked, chitinous beak is horrifically efficient at this task, and a squid can make quick work of sizable meals. Species like the Humboldt squid have even been documented hunting and feeding collaboratively, something octopuses never do. In fact, most squid species can live in schools full-time, something else the solitary octopuses never do. Teaming up to form a school is a pretty common strategy for open-water organisms that don't want to end up in someone's belly. 
The general idea is that the sheer number of animals will hopefully confuse would-be predators and make picking a victim difficult. Octopuses' shelter and camouflage defensive strategy largely makes socializing outside of breeding windows unnecessary. At most, octopuses tolerate each other and can share hunting or nesting grounds from time to time. Though more social than octopuses in general, squids are less infested parents. After eggs are laid, females leave their clutches and hope for the best. Female octopuses, meanwhile, guard and tend their eggs until they themselves die of starvation. Male squids, like male octopuses, do not survive mating. When it comes to locomotion, squids also use jet propulsion by expelling water using their siphons. When not in a rush, the fins on the top of their heads get them from point A to point B. They do not crawl with their arms, and they are far more clumsy and vulnerable on land than their octopod cousins. Another interesting comparison between octopuses and squids is lifespan. Octopuses don't generally live past three years of age, while large squid species can live for up to five years. Squids are also capable of changing color thanks to special skin pigments called chromatophores. However, their color-changing powers are not as advanced as that of the octopus, which can also change its texture. Like all inkfish, though, squids can call upon their trusty ink reserves. When threatened or cornered, a squid can produce a cloud of ink that can obstruct an assailant and buy enough time for the trusty jet propulsion to do its thing.